Now we go inside Ukraine. Igor Novikov is a former advisor to President Zelensky. Thanks for joining me. Thank you for having me. What is your understanding of the state of this Ukrainian opposition that we have witnessed and seen so much about, uh, and how much of it has been organized here in the very recent period where it, it seemed to become clearer uh, that this time would be quite different from some other scares and incursions of a partial nature uh, by Putin's Russia? Well, look, I mean, what happened in Ukraine? Uh, Crimea was uh, annexed rather peacefully because, first of all, um, you know, people kind of fell for that whole Russian fairy tale. So Ukraine was going through some tough times organized by Russia. So they had their stooge for a president. Uh, and basically, people thought, you know, living in Russia would be better. So, you know, Crimea went first, then Russia started a war in Donbass. Um, a lot of people left and kind of settled in Kiev and, you know, Western Ukraine. Uh, but that was the line for them. So definitely people didn't want to see more of Russia. And I think uh, Putin's made a couple of mistakes here. First of all, he's underestimated the uh, Ukrainian resistance. I mean, Ukraine is a freedom loving country. We value human rights and liberty. And, you know, there's no way we're going to be living in Russia. And we're prepared to fight for our land because we have nowhere else to go. So that's the first factor. The second factor, ironically, in, you know, working against Putin's invasion was actually Russia's corruption. And I mean, they weaponized it and tried using it in Ukraine, but they actually, you know, fell on their own sword of source, right? So basically, uh, we're hearing reports that Russia was spending a lot of money to destabilize Ukraine. So they were trying to get President Zelensky overthrown uh, in a coup. Obviously, that money was stolen. Then, you know, they've uh, allocated large sums of money to prepare for this invasion. But what we're seeing on the ground, I mean, a lot of that money was stolen also. So literally, we have that tragic, you know, tragical and comical situation where you have uh, the whole like tank platoons actually running out of fuel uh, outside Kiev and, you know, the, the soldiers fleeing. So, you know, I, I think this is a whole blunder that pretty much sums up, you know, the last 10 years of Russia and, you know, the regime they've kind of been building there. Hmm. How important is it to the Ukrainian people that this president is so clearly standing and fighting and leading, um, that may seem like a requirement and it may seem expected to you, uh, but we have certainly reported on and observed other nations where when invaded and overrun by a much larger military, we see the leadership uh, dissolve or flee. Well, um, I keep saying that, you know, there are two types of politicians. There are politicians, like career politicians, and there are human beings. You know, President Zelensky is an ordinary guy from an industrial city in Ukraine. You know, uh, so he acts just like any other normal, ordinary Ukrainian would. So in a sense, he's become this collective portrait of Ukrainian people. So he's not as much making decisions as kind of channeling the energy and the willpower and the will of the Ukrainian people. So obviously, he's incredibly important to our resistance, uh, you know, against the Russian invasion. But um, it's not only about President Zelensky, it's about all of Ukrainian people. And look, once again, let me reiterate, what Russia is doing is uh, actually building up more resistance. I mean, literally a few hours ago, we've learned that they bombed a village uh, near Zhitomir, which is to the west of Kiev, um, and killed two toddlers for no reason. I mean, it's a, it's a village in the middle of nowhere. So there's no military infrastructure there. There's not even a city nearby. So literally, we had like a fighter plane or whatever, a bomber like fly over and bomb innocent civilians in a village, killing toddlers. I mean, do you expect us to flee after that? Do you expect us to uh, kind of give him our land and say, okay, we've had enough, you know, you win, we panic? No way. I mean, this country will fight to the very last breath and drop of blood. I mean, and anyone who's familiar with Ukraine knows that. Hmm. Former Zelensky advisor Igor Novikov, I want to thank you for your time and perspective, and we wish you safety. Thank you.